Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about writing an introduction, which to me is arguably one of the most difficult parts of an essay to actually construct. However, if we follow a few simple steps and keep a few things in mind, I think we can definitely increase the effectiveness of our introductions. So to get started with our conversation today, I want to first discuss the standard that you have to use or think about and meet when writing an introduction. So we are writing currently in our class argumentative essays. So when we think about writing our argumentative essay, we have to support claims in an analysis using valid reasoning and sufficient and relevant evidence. Now, the first strand of this particular standard says several things. We have to introduce precise, knowledgeable claims. That's part one. We have to, number two, establish the significance of the claims, distinguishing the claims from alternating alternate or opposing claims. That's number two. And then number three, we have to create an organization that logically synchronizes the claims, counterclaims, etc. All of those things have to be done in the introduction of our essay. And so it sounds pretty complicated when you look at this huge strand and realize three different things are going on in your introduction. But let's take it, you know, bit by bit, if you will. So number one, the whole concept of introducing a precise knowledgeable claim. Well, all that means is in your introduction, not only are you giving the claim, but before you ever give the claim, you've got to provide that background information. Oops, let's make that a little clearer. The context, if you will, that will make that claim understandable to your audience. Number two, when it talks about establishing the significance of your claim, distinguishing it from others, then all you have to do is just make it clear why others might disagree with your claim. So that means you're going to present those overarching counter arguments to your claim. I'm so sorry. But let's fix that. The number three, you have to be able to create an organization that sequences your paper. And that's always going to be held in the thesis statement of your essay. So it sounds very complicated. But when we break it down, break down the strand, there are mainly three things that we're doing, providing that background, presenting the counter arguments, and then making sure our claim organizes the paper for our readers. Okay, so when we think about going into writing the introduction, we want to make sure that we have that we do those three things that the standard says, but we also, again, want to make sure that we are engaging the audience, making them want to read our paper. We want to provide that background, as we already know, and establish why other positions are incorrect. So just again, kind of in a shortened form here, those are our three goals. So I think the most effective way of organizing an introduction, and honestly, one of the easiest ways of organizing an introduction, follows what we call the GPS method. And no, I don't mean global positioning system. I mean general, particular, and specific information. So when we think about an introduction, I think an upside down triangle is the best visual representation of an introduction. Why? Because it starts very, very broad here at the top, very wide, and then it comes to a point at the bottom. And that's really what an introduction should do. You want to draw the reader in with very broad information, start narrowing it down, right, as we go down the line here and down the triangle with some specific, or, or excuse me, some more particular information. And then you hit them with your overall claim that the paper will support throughout the entire body with your thesis. Okay, so let's talk about each of these component parts with the GP and the S. So the general information. You want to start with broad information instead of narrowed down information. Now, for example, that means if you, for whatever reason, were trying to argue about chicken dishes, which is the best chicken dish ever, then you would start by talking about chicken dishes in general. You wouldn't just start out with lemon pepper chicken is the best. That doesn't give your audience any type of context for why we're talking about lemon pepper chicken. It kind of seems just out of the blue. So you want to start very broad. If you were writing about exploration, for example, you wouldn't start necessarily with Hernando de Soto. That would be a strange place to start. You would want to start talking about exploration in general. Okay, so you want to start very broad. Then we start narrowing it down as we get to the middle of this triangle, right? We need to be a little bit more particular with what our paper is actually going to discuss. So when we think about the particular section, here you might introduce a current debate over a controversial topic. So, if, for example, if you were going to talk about health care, you might explain that currently in America or, you know, at certain points in history, there's been this discussion of should the American government pay for health care or should it not? That might go in the middle of your paper. Um, if you're arguing about a particular text or set of text, this middle section of your intro is where you want to discuss those texts that might involve some sort of summary 
of the text. For example, if I'm going to use an example for in a few minutes of, of an argument based on the play, The Crucible. If you are writing about a particular work of literature, the middle part of your intro is where you want to sum up what happened in the story, which characters you're going to talk about, why they are important to your argument. Now, you don't want to tell the entire tale. No, 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 no. You're going to, you're going to pick that information that your audience absolutely needs to know in order to understand the essay. Okay, so you're just going to pick and choose that information. You're not lying, but you're just giving us that information that we have to understand to understand the paper. And then at the very end, boom, we hit our audience with the specific point of the essay, which is going to be our, our claim. Okay, now again, the hard part about the introduction here is not so much figuring out this information, but I love again the triangle because we know that each sentence here is building on the next to create that straight line going down the paper. So that's important to think about as you're constructing the the introduction is you want everything to be cohesive and connected. But I think from my experiences, if I start very broad, then I move to my particular background information, it leads all right in to my specific thesis statement. Now, another way of thinking of organizing this in your head, if you're not a visual person with the upside down triangle, is trying to is kind of using this guide that I've typed up here. Sentence one is your general information, right? It's the G. Start with a sentence that will catch the attention of your reader, but that introduces the subject of the paper. You could ask a question. You could make a statement about your topics um, of, of the pieces that you're going to be talking about. You could give a definition. That's a great place if you're talking about a term that people don't understand. A definition is a great way to start. You could use an anecdote, a little story that's going to lead into your larger claim. But you, want, you don't want to start with your opinion. You want to start with some general information that not only catches the reader's attention, but that, it, that is generally bringing them into the topic. In sentences two and three of your intro, and this could be more, obviously, if you need it, you want to start narrowing down your topic. If you're talking about a particular piece of literature, again, author's, author's name, article title, um, a summary of that particular info that we need to know, that needs to go in these sentences. Again, depending on how you started the paper, you may need to still define any terms or bring up controversial ideas or parts of that text that you're going to discuss. So there's several things you can do to start narrowing the paper down. These are just some suggestions. But again, you don't want to start, um, excuse me, you don't want to just give your summary of a piece of literature as, as the beginning of your essay, because again, that won't let your audience know why in the world you're talking about this piece of literature. Okay. Now, um, obviously these numbers, you can have more sentences for your general information. You can have you probably can't do it in less, honestly, than two sentences, but these numbers are obviously um, individualized. You use as many sentences here that you need. This sentence here, though, what I have numbered to sentence four and what is the sentence that sentence or sentences that come right before your thesis are really important. I drew a circle around this or kind of a, a hook, and that's what I wanted that image to be, because once you have given your general information, once you have narrowed down your topic and given that specific background, then I want you to think about, okay, how do I connect all of this stuff to my actual claim? And that's what the sentences four and five, depends on how many you need to do this. You've got to make that connection. Now, it can't just be, here's, you know, here's the definition of torture, or here's the definition of homeschool. Let me give you some background on homeschooling. Homeschooling is great. You've got to make some connection between your background and your actual claim. And that's what the sentence four needs to do. It's that connecting part. So what is it, you know, what information it doesn't need to be a counter argument. Some people believe this while others do not. The, the current trend is this, but in reality, this is wrong. What can you do to connect this part of your intro to your actual thesis statement? And that's going to be a big, um, a big helper. Again, a lot of people put their counter, put counter arguments here, acknowledge other sides exist and then state that they're wrong, and then the thesis let, clears up why that's incorrect. That's a good way to do it, is to put the counter argument there um, and address that. So I'm just going to put a CA here on the side to remind us of that. But it doesn't have to be that. You just need some sort of cohesive element in that sentence to bring it all together. Okay. And then again, you end strongly with that thesis statement. It always needs to come last um, or very, very close to last in this introduction because, again, this thing, this thesis statement, this main claim is what you are actually introducing. It's the whole point of this paragraph. So it needs to come in last. It's the showstopper. It's not the show opener. Okay. It needs to come last and be the big star. Now, I'm going to skip that for just a second. 
What's going to follow here are a couple of examples of things that I've put together again in terms of brainstorming for the thesis and then, or excuse me, for the introduction and then also how to put this information together and what it looks like in real life. Okay, so our first example is going to look at um, some brainstorming for a paragraph written in response to this prompt. So let's look at the prompt very quickly. While it may seem that the characters in the Crucible, that's a play about the Salem Witch Trials, are motivated by fear of witchcraft, argue the true motivation of your character's actions in the play. So with this essay, students are given the task of figuring out or, or doing two things. One, they, they choose their own character from the play. But number two, they have to identify the true motivation, the true thing behind their character that was leading that character's actions. So as we move forward, that's important to understand. So if we think about this GPS method, we know sentence one was our G, right? It was that background information. So couple things this person could do, they could define the term motivation. Okay. Now one of the motivations in the play was to gain redemption. So if that was one of the, one of the ways they were going to take the paper, they might, they might choose to define that particular term. They could have also described just the Puritans in general, this group of people that the play is about, that would have been a good way to start the paper. Um, with, excuse me, they could have also discussed the debate between people acting for what is right and then people trying to maintain their own safety because that's a that's something that depending on the character that was chosen they could talk about that debate you know are we being are we just you know is it okay if i'm afraid of something to take other people's rights away from them to make maintain my safety in this case from witchcraft so there's several different ways you could start this paper but again none of this has to do with i, I haven't named a character yet i haven't told their true motivation i'm just bringing the audience in with some broad information in my sentence two, and then in sentences three and five, I need to introduce the title of my play and my author's name. Then I move to telling which character I chose, and then provide a summary, I left out that why there, we'll just add it in, sorry about that, of the play that can actually connect to the thesis. So again, let's say I chose John Proctor, he's one of the main characters of the play. I don't need to tell all of John Proctor's life or everything he does in the play. I just need to summarize the parts of the, his, the story that connect to what I'm going to argue about. So again, I'm not telling me a whole play over again, but I need to, I need to hit those highlights that influence my thesis. In my second to last sentence or second couple of sentences before my thesis, again, here I'm choosing to do the opposing viewpoints or the counter argument, CA for short. And I'm doing that just to, again, bridge my background and my actual thesis statement, but I don't necessarily have to use the counter argument, but again, it's going to work for this particular one. Okay. So I've thought through all of these things before I've actually gone to type the introduction and that's going to give me a really good plan. And again, make sure when I think about my shape, if you will, of my introduction, am I being connected and cohesive? Does everything build down to my thesis statement? And that's really important when I'm making this, this introduction. Okay. So I just want to look one more time at a couple of samples here to close out this particular discussion and then you'll be free to go and try your hand using the GPS method with writing your own intro. All right, for this particular set of, of introductions that I'm going to show you, we're going to switch prompts because again, this GPS method, it's not only for one particular essay. It works over a broad span. Honestly, any type of essay that's argumentative, in my opinion, that you will ever have to write, you can use this 